Welcome to my presentation on the photoelectric effect. I'm Bernard Taylor, there I am, and I'm Fez Physics, really. Why Fez Physics? Well, because I am a physicist. get it? First of all, a couple of tips. Isaac Physics, it's a great website, which I've used with my students in the past, very good for practice with calculations. And another tip, don't just look at your own exam board's past uh, papers, look at other exam board questions as well. So let's get into it. Albert Einstein, he published four papers in 1905 on the photoelectric effect, on Brownian motion, on special relativity, and on the equivalence between mass and energy, E equals mc squared, and other things as well. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1921. Uh, mainly for his explanation of the photoelectric effect, using the idea of photons, which is the concept that light is quantized, that light comes in packets, packets of energy. And the photon energy is defined as H times F, where H is Planck's constant and F is the frequency of the associated wave. So think about a packet of quantum of energy. And let's look at this gold leaf electroscope. The stem, the vertical stem, attached to a cap, and there's a gold leaf which can move up and down, and which at the moment is at a bit of an angle. Well, the gold leaf electroscope is negatively charged, that means there's lots of electrons everywhere, and that's the reason why the gold, why the gold leaf rises, because the negative electrons on the leaf itself are repelled by the negative electrons at the bottom of the stem. There's a zinc plate, a clean zinc plate, which is put onto the cap, and ultraviolet radiation, remember ultraviolet, uh, high frequency, short wavelengths, quite high energy photons. When the ultraviolet radiation is switched on, it's noticed that the gold leaf goes down. Why? Well, electrons are being kicked out of the zinc plate, ejected from the zinc plate, is a better way of putting it. Um, these electrons which are ejected are the photoelectrons. So the electroscope is becoming less negative and there are less electrons all over the electroscope, including the stem and the leaf, so the gold leaf goes down. But it's an interesting question that sometimes comes up in exams. Why does the zinc plate have to be very clean? Yes, the photons won't reach the zinc metal surface itself if there's a layer of corrosion, a bit like a, a layer of rust. Now, a few points that we're going to quickly run through. The number of photoelectrons ejected per second is proportional to the intensity of the incident radiation. More photons per second coming in, more photoelectrons ejected per second from the zinc, in the case of the gold leaf electroscope. Each metal has its own threshold frequency, F0, below which no emission of photoelectron occurs, no matter how intense the incoming radiation is. So a threshold frequency. The kinetic energy of an ejected photoelectron increases as the frequency of the incident radiation increases. And as long as the frequency is above the threshold frequency, a photoelectron is ejected, and that happens immediately. And one point, this last point, number five, that examiners really do like you to mention in uh, answers, one photon ejects only one photoelectron. Okay, so there's our rem reminder. The photon energy equals HF, the Planck constant times the frequency. And blue light has a higher frequency than red light. So blue light has higher energy photons. Red light has lower energy photons. That's just a, a quick reminder. 
let's look at this equation. And this is something that you really need to be familiar with. HF is the energy of the incoming photon. Where does that go? That goes towards the work function. But what is the work function? The work function is the amount of energy, the amount of energy needed to overcome the attraction between the about to be ejected at photoelectron and the positive metal ions. So we've got the energy of the incoming photon that goes towards the energy needed to overcome the attraction between the photoelectron and the positive metal ions. And if there's any energy le left over, it goes towards the kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectron. HF equals phi plus Ke. Now, we need to know about electron volts and about joules and to be able to convert between the two with uh, ease. If you remember the definition of a volt, one volt is one joule per coulomb, let's use symbols. V equals, well, energy, I could have used E or delta E. V equals energy over Q, so energy equals Q times V joules. If we have one electron accelerated or moved through a PD of 10 volts, how much energy in joules does it gain? Well, let's use the equation. Energy equals Q times V, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times 10 volts, which right down at the bottom is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Okay. But at the top of the next page, one electron accelerated through a PD of 10 volts, we say gains 10 electron volts of energy. We don't need to worry about powers of 10 if we're talking about electron volts. One electron accelerated through one volt gains therefore one electron volt of energy. And if we look at this, one electron accelerated through one volt, the energy gain Q times V is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So down at the bottom in black, I've got one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Okay, this conversion factor will uh, most likely appear on your uh, formula, your data section of your exam, but you need to be familiar with it. And let's move on. This past exam question says monochromatic light, light of one frequency, yeah, is shone onto the surface of a clean metal plate. The photoelectric effect results in electrons being emitted from the surface. State and explain the effect on the emitted electrons if Firstly, the frequency of the light is increased. Well, take your time to explain it clearly. E equals HF, so the energy of the incident photon is greater. And since HF equals phi, work function, plus Ke, well, if the frequency increases, then the kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectron will increase. Part two, what happens if the intensity of the light is increased? The number of incident photons per second will increase, so the number of photoelectrons ejected per second increases. It's not that they have any more energy, it's just that we get more of them. And remember, one incident photon, one ejected photoelectron. Now, we're often asked to explain how the photoelectric effect supports the particle model of light and not the wave model of light. Well, we might say something like this. Photons arrive as a quantum or packet of energy, E equals HF, which supports the particle model. One photon ejects one photoelectron, which supports the particle model. Hey, we've got two marks already. The wave model, however, suggests that the wave energy depends on intensity and that the energy can build up as the wave comes in until there's enough energy for an electron to be ejected. This would suggest a time delay before the ejection of a photoelectron, but the emission of a photoelectron is immediate with no time delay. Also, According to the wave model, 
a greater intensity of light should give photoelectrons with more kinetic energy. But this does not happen. Now, each tick relates to a mark. But let's see if we can uh, summarize this. First of all, in terms of supporting the particle theory, the incoming photon carries a packet or quantum of energy E equals HF. Increasing the frequency increases the energy of the photon. Right, we're familiar with that. One photon will eject one photoelectron. Yes, say it. Now, let's say something else about the ejection of one photoelectron requires a minimum energy called the work function. Phi equals H times F naught, where F naught is the threshold frequency. The greater photon energy results in a greater kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons. More intense radiation means more photons arriving per second and results in more photoelectrons ejected per second. And don't get mixed up between photons and photoelectrons. Okay, what about the wave theory? Wave theory suggests that the more intense radiation should give us a greater kinetic energy, but this doesn't happen. Wave theory suggests that the incoming energy adds up and eventually results in the emission of a photoelectron, i.e. there will be a time delay. The emission of a photoelectron happens immediately with no time delay. Okay, depending on your physics specification, you need to be familiar with this type of material. Let's look at some further past exam questions. Calculate the frequency and photon energy for red light of wavelength 665 nanometers. Nanometers? 10 to the minus? Yeah, 10 to the minus nine. Now, you might want to pause here, try the calculation and see if you get the same answer. And, and more importantly, perhaps, make sure you're putting down your thinking, explaining your calculation to the examiner. So pause, do your calculation, but explain what you're doing. Show your calculation. And don't forget to put in the units. So we've got the wavelength, F equals C over lambda, so we can work out the frequency, 4.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz, Photon energy equals HF, and I hope we get about three times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Okay, now the work function of potassium is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Explain what's meant by the term work function. Pause, try your answer. Yeah, the work function is the minimum energy that an electron needs to escape from the surface of a metal, i.e. with zero kinetic energy. So it's just kicked out. And I, I kind of think about it as just being kicked out and kind of hovering there. Okay, it needs to overcome the attraction from the positive metal ions in the metal lattice. Oh. We've got the work function in joules. Can we work out the work function in electron volts? Pause, try this. And yeah, we've got the conversion factor. One electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So one joule is one over 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 electron volts. 3.5 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Well, I hope you can follow that clearly, and you should have got about 2.2 electron volts. And another question radiation of wavelength 4 times 10 to the minus 7 meters falls onto a clean potassium surface. Calculate the kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons. Okay, we've got the wavelength. I'm working out the photon energy. HF equals phi plus Ke. Write, these, write this equation down. I've got the photon energy. 
equals phi plus the kinetic energy. And so the kinetic energy of the photoelectron is equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 19 minus 3.5 times 10 to the minus 19, which is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And I hope you got that right. Now, in the last question, what was the speed of the photoelectrons in the last question? We're given the electron mass. So perhaps you might want to pause and try the calculation yourself. And yes, kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So v squared is two times the kinetic energy over the mass. And you can see my calculation there. I've got v squared, and I work out a value for v, 5.7 times 10 to the 5 ms to the minus 1. Did you put in the units? I hope so. Now, we often get questions which involve graphs. You've looked at using the equation. Let's look at a question which involves uh, the concepts of threshold frequency, but using a graph. A metal surface is illuminated with light. An electron in the metal surface requires a minimum amount of energy to escape from the surface. Yes, we know that. The frequency has changed and the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons emitted is measured for each frequency. And we get the graph. The y-axis is maximum kinetic energy times 10 to the minus 19 joules. The frequency along the x-axis times 10 to the 15 hertz. And remember, one of my tips is to circle those powers of 10 in the uh, y-axis and the x-axis, just so you don't forget them in any calculation. Use the graph to determine the minimum frequency uh, for an electron to escape from the metal surface. In other words, for it barely to have any kinetic energy, to have zero kinetic energy, just to say escaping. And of course, that's going to be 1.0 times 10 to the 15 hertz, and that's the threshold frequency, F north. Okay, let's move on with this question. We're asked to explain how the graph suggests that the minimum amount of energy is required for an electron to escape from the metal. Well, B equals HF naught is the minimum energy below F naught, no electrons are ejected. Above F naught, electrons are ejected. We're asked to calculate the gradient of the graph. Now, this, I think, is, is quite a significant question. We can calculate the gradient of the graph, use a large triangle, and getting the gradient, remembering the powers of 10, and we get a gradient of about 6.7 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Hmm, does that number look familiar? It should do. Now, let me use my cursor here. Here, I've got the photoelectric equation. HF equals phi plus Ke. Let's rearrange that and make kinetic energy, the, which is the y-axis, the subject of the equation. So HF, sorry, Ke equals HF minus phi. So that the frequency is along the x-axis and the gradient is, of course, Planck's constant. So the gradient is equal to the Planck constant. Now, if we were to have had an extended y-axis, we could also see that if the frequency is zero, so if the frequency is zero, the kinetic energy value equals minus phi. So that's going to be um, on the y-intercept, giving you the um, work function. But we're not asked about that in this question. So be prepared to rearrange that equation in the manner that I've shown you there. Now, another experiment that's often um, shown in labs, which in my experience is, is not always um, that successful. These experiments are a little bit tricky to do, 
but we can see that we've got um, a clean piece of magnesium ribbon normally cleaned with sandpaper and I would use something like alcohol to wipe off any 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 dust any remaining dirt it's in the middle of this kind of cylinder of metal gauze the bottom of the magnesium ribbon is attached to the negative of a power supply the metal gauze is attached to the positive of our power supply our cell and we've got a microammeter in there. Now, ultraviolet light reaches the magnesium ribbon through the, the holes in, in the metal gauze and photoelectrons are ejected from the magnesium. They're attracted to the metal gauze and give a very small current in the circuit, a very small current. And it's worth reminding you at this point that different metals have different work functions. And as I've indicated before, the work function may be given in joules or indeed in electron volts. Now, another exam question. The diagram shows the apparatus for an experiment on the photoelectric effect. We've got radiation coming in, hitting the cathode C. A light is shone onto the cathode C and a potential difference is applied between the cathode and the anode of the photo cell. A sensitive ammeter is used to detect any current that flows. The light is replaced by one of the same intensity but a different photon energy. Now remember if that radiation is coming in and passing through the transparent walls of what would be a photocell and hitting the cathode, then electrons would go from C to A. Look at the table. First light, we've got the, photo, uh, the photon energy, 1.8 electron volts. The second light, 3.8 electron volts. We've got the work function the work function of that metal cathode is 2.3 electron volts, that doesn't change. But in the first light, we get no current. In the second light, the photon energy has been increased and isn't it above the work function? So why is the first ammeter reading zero? We could have said the photon energy is less than the work function, the examiners would also allow us to say that the frequency of the incoming photons is less than the threshold frequency. Now just look at for a moment before we move on to the next part of this question, look at the intensity value. It's one watt per square meter. Okay. The experiment, it says, is repeated using the same two photon energies, but the intensities of the sources are increased. Now the intensity is now four watts per square meter. The work function, still the same, same old metal, same old work function. Now, if we're increasing the intensity of the light by a factor of four, that means we've got four times more incoming photo uh, incoming photons and when we do get in for the second light when we do get um uh, photo electrons emitted then we're going to have four times more photo electrons and isn't that a current the movement of electrons from c to a represents a current so the current increases by a factor of four and four times that original um, current is two times 10 to the minus 11 amps. A cunning question. Now, we're told here that the cathode metal is lithium and we're asked to explain, express, sorry, the work function of lithium in joules. And again, it's one of those conversion 
questions. Uh, one electron volt we said was 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, so 2.3 electron volts. We just do the multiplication and we get the work function as being 3.7 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Easy marks. Now for part two of the ultraviolet radiation has a photon energy of 4.8 times 10 to the minus 18 joules shone onto the lithium cathode and we're asked to calculate the maximum speed of the photoelectrons that are emitted. We did a similar calculation before and just look at it. The photon energy equals the work function plus the kinetic energy. Do the maths and the kinetic energy is 4.43 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. That's the kinetic energy, a half mv squared. And if we work out v squared, I've got two times the kinetic energy over the mass of an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, given in the uh, data section of your exam paper. And the speed is 3.1 times 10 to the 6 ms to the minus 1. And remember, if you get a value of 3 times bigger than 3 times 10 to the 8, you've done something wrong. Okay. That's all I'm going to look at for the moment. That's my introduction to the photoelectric effect. We've got equations, but we've got to think about the graph as well. So, Thank you very much and whatever you're doing, keep working.